Whitehall, 1212. This is Scotland Yard. For the first time in history, Scotland Yard opens its official files to bring you the true story of some of its most baffling cases. These are the true stories. The plain, unvarnished facts, just as they occurred, reenacted for you by an all-British cast. Only the names of the participants have, for obvious reasons, been changed. The broadcasts are presented with the full cooperation of Scotland Yard. Research for Whitehall 1212 is from Percy Hoskins of the London Daily Express. The stories for radio are written and directed by Willis Cooper. You will now hear the voice of Chief Superintendent John Davidson, who is custodian of the famous Black Museum of Scotland Yard. Many of the objects on exhibit here in the Black Museum, as you undoubtedly know, are weapons of murder. They're not always knives, bludgeons, and guns. Murder is done with a great variety of instruments never intended for that unpleasant task. These wrinkled sheets of what appears to be black blotting paper have been responsible for a great many deaths. In fact, they were manufactured for that purpose and sold openly years ago. It's true that most of the deaths these papers caused were perfectly legal, in fact, to be desired. But these particular ones figured in a case of most revolting murder. You see, these are old-fashioned flypapers. Once they were impregnated with arsenic, soaked in water and left standing about in a saucer, they furnished a working solution of pure arsenic. The flies who sipped it found their way at once through the pearly gates. So did them any unwary pets who sampled it, and some careless people. On the 20th of September, 1911, a rather shabby fat man called on Inspector Oliver Peters at his office in New Scotland Yard. My name is Pete Van Hals, Inspector. I I live in Finsbury Park. Finsbury Park, let me think. That's near Holloway Prison. Uh, It's just beyond Holloway Road, yes, sir. Yes. Well, what brings you here, sir? Well, sir, I... To put it quite plainly, my aunt is dead. I'm sorry to hear that, Mr... Van Hals, sir. Pete Van Hals. I'm sorry to hear about your aunt, sir. But to what... I... uh, My aunt was not... Oh, how shall I say it? I'm sure I don't know, Mr. Van Hals. Say what? Well, I mean she was not very nice. Oh. I'll be perfectly frank with you, Inspector Peters. May I sit down? By all means, sir. Thank you. My aunt had money. Oh. No, 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 not a great deal, I suppose, in some ways, but, but quite a good sum. And, and what I have always expected would be my share one day. A considerable sum to me, you see. And, and you didn't be... get it? No, I didn't. Of only me and my wife. Naturally, we expect to... She lived with us. When she died? Well, no, no. I must admit, we quarreled once in a while. I see. Oh, no, 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 you don't see. I I mean, that wasn't it. Although we haven't seen her for nearly a year still... Blood is thicker than water, you're going to say? Exactly, exactly. I, I couldn't have put it better myself. Blood is uh, thicker than water. That's what I always tell my wife. You said your aunt wasn't living with you? No, she'd gone to live with the family in Tollington Park. That's a street, Tollington Park, in in Finsbury Park. Only a little way from where my wife and I live. That's where your aunt died? Yeah, that's where she died. In this fellow's house. And I wasn't even told about it till after she was dead and buried. I was the only living relation, and I expected... And you weren't mentioned in the will at all? Oh, yes, I I was mentioned in the will. Oh, yes, yes, I was in it. Well, then I don't understand. I I was left ten pounds, and I I didn't even get that. Well, Mr. Van Hals, I'm sorry. Uh, And ten pounds was all the money she had left. What? That was all the money she had, I tell you. Where was the rest of it? He had it. Who? 
This, this Simons, this man who... Her landlord, the, the fellow who owns the place where she was living. How did he get it? I don't know. But he had it. He still got it. That's not all. She left me ten pounds, yes. but he showed me where he'd spend eleven pounds, ten shillings, ten pence halfpenny for her funeral expenses. One pound and one shilling and ten pence halfpenny more than my paltry legacy. Well. And since I was next of kin, I had to pay it. So my rich aunt dies, and I am out thirty shillings. Thirty shillings and a halfpenny. What do you think of that, sir? Well, Mr. Van Howells, I'm dreadfully sorry for but you. But can't you do anything about it? How do you know he's got the rest of her money? Why, he showed me the papers. Oh. Looks legal to me, but I'm, I'm sure it's not. Look here, Inspector. I, I don't want it all. I, I want only my share, but as the sole surviving relative, well, it was a lot of money. Was it? Well, 4,000 pounds isn't tram fare, Inspector. 4,000 pounds? 4,000 pounds. Well, my best advice to you, Mr. Van Hals, is to consult a solicitor. Solicitor? You need to have someone look at those papers you spoke about. You're sure they were signed by your aunt? Why do you think I came to Scotland Yard, Inspector? Well, now... My aunt, may the Lord rest a poor soul, had a fine marble tomb she bought for herself in Highgate. Paid 700 pounds for it. She always talked about being placed in it when she passed away. And? Uh, this fellow Simons, he knew about it. My aunt was always talking about her last resting place. He knew about it all right. You know what he did? I'm sure I don't. He had her buried... Be I didn't even know she was dead. He had her buried in a common grave in Islington with eight other bodies. Well, But what's... don't you know murderers do that? That was no basis for an accusation of murder, of course. But the circumstances did warrant an investigation, Inspector Peters thought. So he paid a visit to Bertram Simons, the man who had been Miss Hogg's landlord. That was the aunt's name, Miss Hogg, Miss Winifred Hogg. Mr. Simons, the landlord, was a businessman. Yes, Miss Winifred Hogg rented the second floor of my house here some 11 months ago. I'd be glad to answer any questions about her and our business relations... Any I deem proper, sir. Uh, your name is Peters, sir. Inspector Peters, yes, sir. Who sent you here? I was not sent here by anyone, Mr. Simons. I came here in the course of my duties as a member of the Criminal Investigation Department. Have a chair. Thank you. Now, what would you like to know about Miss Hogg? Well, sir, with your permission... Did Van Hals send you here? I think I told you, sir, that nobody sent me here. Oh, yes, sir, that's right. But Van Hals has been complaining to you about me, hasn't he? Mr. Van Hals has spoken to me, sir, yes. I would like to... Uh, what did he say? I don't think that... Oh, he... yes, it has. He's accusing me. I, I've met our Mr. Van Hals, Inspector. Ha. May I ask you a few questions, Mr. Simons? He's disappointed. May I ask you... You may ask any questions you wish. Well, then... I'll answer the ones I feel are proper. I've said this woman lived in my house for 11 months. I can give you the exact period. I don't want... 11 months. Less one, two, four, six days to the time she died. Her weekly rent for the entire second floor of this house that. was 15 shillings and sixpence, which I think was uh, extraordinarily cheap. Don't you? Now, what else? You uh, had other financial arrangements with Miss Hogg, I understand. I did. Would you care to say anything about them, sir? I don't think it's any of your business. But I see no reason to... No reason whatever. Purely a business arrangement. I'm a businessman, Inspector. I'm sure you are, sir. Miss Hogg was, let me say, suspicious of the finances of the present government. Uh, the Lloyd George budget, for example, caused her a great deal of trepidation. A great many people seem to share that trepidation. I'm sure I don't, sir. I've never had cause to fear for the soundness of the British Empire. I wasn't suggesting... She suggested to me that she would be willing to turn over to me such... Bonds, securities, and monies as she possessed. She did? Yes. What she wanted was security. Freedom from worry, she said. She asked me if, I, if I'd be willing to pay her an annuity for life in return for what monies and securities she possessed. 
And you agreed. I did that. And she made over all her assets to me. I'll show you the papers. Yes, but... Um, Is uh, anything wrong, Inspector? I don't seem to find a record of your agreement to pay her this annuity you speak of. Three pounds a week. Let me see. I'm sure I had it. Yes, but... But what? There, these seem to be your records of payments to Miss Hogg. Well, that's what they are. Ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty weeks at three pounds per week until the 8th of September, the day she died. I don't see any record of her having received the payments, Mr. Simons. Eh? And is there a record of the whole transaction? I mean, a signed agreement between you two... There is not. Miss Hogg didn't wish to have any further uh, agreements in writing, I mean, about the matter of the... Uh, I, well, I think she didn't wish other people to know she was receiving an annuity. This is most extraordinary, Mr. Simons. It is, isn't it? Yes. Miss Hogg was not very much of a businesswoman, you see. Obviously she was not. But you're a businessman, aren't you, Mr. Simons? There's nothing wrong about that. Well, these appear to be in legal form. But I'm not prepared to say what Mr. Van Hal's or a court of equity would be likely to say to it. It's legal, all right. What about Miss Hogg's will, then? I had several copies typed up. I was a witness to it. Yes. Yes, here's the will. Yes, it's essentially what Mr. Van Hal said. He was bequeathed the sum of ten pounds by his aunt. Ten pounds, yes. I see. And uh, here's the undertaker's bill. Eleven pounds, ten shillings, and ten pence halfpenny. I advance this amount to the undertaker. Leaving Mr. Van Hals in your debt in the sum of thirty-one shillings and a halfpenny. He paid me. Yes. We, uh, what's this? Eh? Oh, that's the undertaker's original bill. Signed, paid by him. Here. That's what I'm looking at. What's this item? Remitted to Mr. Simons, one pound, one shilling. F. Anderson. That's the undertaker's signature. No, no. The item. Oh, commission. Commission? Ten percent. I gave him the business. He paid me for it. You made a profit? Yes. On the funeral? Of course. What's wrong with that? I'm a businessman. Yes. Why did you have Miss Hogg buried in a common grave, Mr. Simons? Because it was cheaper. Partly, yes. But did you see her death certificate? Of course not. Let me show it to you. What about the tomb she owned in Highgate? Yeah. Why wasn't she buried there? Look at the death certificate, Inspector. See here? Cause of death? Epidemic diarrhea. Epidemic diarrhea, sir, is a contagious disease. Isn't it better to bury that kind of a corpse in a grave with half a dozen other victims of the same and not risk passing the disease on to healthy people? Answer me that, sir. Well, I'm not a fool, Inspector. You're too squeamish, young man. <laughs> you think I'm a heartless person because I'm not ashamed to take my profit, don't you? Well, that's your opinion. But I assure you, sir, that I'm not a fool. Not by any manner of means, Inspector, I'm not a fool. Now, is there anything else you want to know? You can't prove anything by an interview like that. Some of us oldsters here at Scotland Yard say there are people who can smell a crime. Inspector Oliver Peters was that kind of man. It took an extraordinary amount of sniffing, though, before his nose pointed in the right direction. I suppose it was Van Howes who gave him the suggestion. He came into Peters' office to inquire what had occurred, and Peters told him. I don't like it at all, Van Howes. I can't say anything at all, sir, but I'm... I mean, I believe he... Treated my aunt very badly. I, I don't know what he did to her, What's but... What's that? Well, when I was at his house there in Islington, the day before I came to see you... Yes? Well, I saw the room she lived in. He showed it to me. Nice room? 
It was filthy. It was. I don't believe he took any care of her at all. Flies... Well, a sick room. Though flypaper's cheap enough. Well, there there were saucers in the room with the flypapers in them. There was three or four of them. But all the water had dried up and there was nothing but the dried up poison papers left. And I saw that they were... Poison. What? The poison papers were all dried up. Excuse me. Did I say something? Stay here. I'll be back in a few minutes. Peters was in Basil Pearson's office and two jumped. Basil Pearson was the famous home office pathologist. He died last year. This was 40 years ago, remember? Peters had a question to ask. Sorry to burst in on you like this, Basil. What's chasing you? Look here. You're familiar with the symptoms of this epidemic diarrhea, aren't you? Of course. Afraid you've got it, old boy? No, of course not. What I'd like you to answer me is, are the symptoms anything like the symptoms of arsenic poisoning? Arsenic's w- what's in flypaper, isn't it? Yes, of course. Yes, under certain circumstances. If a person was suffering from this epidemic thing, the presence of arsenic might not be suspected. The patient's dead, of course. And buried. Hmm. No, unless arsenical poisoning was suspected, there's enough similarity to warrant certifying that death was caused by the epidemic thing. Good. Now, is there enough arsenic in flypaper to cause death? Under certain circumstances. You can identify arsenic in a dead body too, can't you? I mean, the body has not been dead too long. In lethal quantities, you mean? Yes. Well, it's not generally too difficult. How much is a lethal quantity? Oh, uh, five grains or upward. You planning on murdering someone? I shouldn't recommend arsenic. How long after death can you find arsenic in a body, Basil? Mm, good time, I should say. How long is this one? About two weeks, I think. <laughs> That's not long at all. Why, post-mortem for me? I'd rather hope to get away for a holiday tomorrow. Oh, it won't take you long to do a PM, Basil. Come on, old boy. Well, got the papers. I'll have them for you by tomorrow. All right. Where is it? Islington. That dreary place. Islington Cemetery, to be quite honest. Well, thank heavens arsenic acts as a preservative. I'll give you a hand. Just get me the papers, old boy. Shan't even pack a kit bag until I see the papers, you know. Oh, by the by, is it a he or a she? She. I'll go and see if I can get George Redmond to give me the papers at once. Thanks ever so much. Uh, don't fret too much if he won't let you have them at once, Oliver. Eh? Why? Well, she can't get away. <laughs> There is a small mortuary near Holloway Prison, which is not far away from Islington Cemetery. There's a laboratory there, too, not a very complete one, but Basil Pearson said it would be satisfactory. They found the arsenic. Offhand, I'd say the body contains a fatal quantity of arsenic. Good. I think so, I said, remember. I have to take these samples of tissue and whatnot and check them quantitatively first, but I think so. But arsenic is present. She's soaked in it. How about whatever it was she was supposed to have died of? It doesn't look like it from the inside here. It might have looked that way in an ordinary examination. <laughs> Obviously arsenic or poisoning. Uh, now that we know the arsenic's here... Inspector Peters went back to see Mr. Simons, the businessman. Mr. Simons didn't seem to be very excited, and that rather puzzled Inspector Peters. But he tried not to be obvious about it. (laughs) What's so hilarious, may I ask? Oh, you look funny. (laughs) Oh, do I? Have you been outwitted by a clever criminal, Inspector? (laughs) I don't think I have, no. Well, pardon me for laughing. (laughs) But you did look funny. What can I do for you, Inspector? Are you agreeable to answering a few questions, Mr. Simons? Oh, you're a very inquisitive man. I am. Well, I'll give you the same answer I gave you before. I'll answer such questions as I think are proper. Thank you. 
Delighted. Very well. Well, begin, Inspector. Very well. Oh, stop saying very well and ask your questions. Very well. Where did the arsenic come from that was found in Miss Hoggs's body? What arsenic? You didn't know that a large quantity of arsenic was found in her body? No, I didn't. It was. How did it get there? I doubt it was an accident, Mr. Simons. Well, how could it get there? Arsenic. Arsenic. I don't believe it. I can assure you it's there. That's what killed her. Where could she have got arsenic? I wonder, too. I don't know. Where can one buy arsenic? At a chemist's shop, I fancy. Not without a poison certificate. Are they certain it's arsenic? Basil Pearson says so. I've heard of him, haven't I? Nearly everyone in England has. He's, um... I mean, he's... What do you call him? A path- He's home office pathologist. Knows all about poison? Yes. If he says there's poison in a body, he's pretty certain to be right. If he says so, there's no question about it. And he says so? Yes. He says there was enough poison in Miss Hogg's body to kill her. Yes. Ha. Huh. Has Miss Hogg's sick room been cleaned yet, Mr. Simons? Eh? Oh, I'm sorry to say it hasn't. It has been fumigated, though. Otherwise, nothing's been changed. Oh, no. I was going to sell the bedstead and the mattress. Uh, You are a businessman. Yes, that's right. Have you any objections to taking me there? To the sick room? Yes, of course. Why? Why, the germs. The microbes. She died there. She died of arsenical poisoning. Oh, Oh, that's right, that's right, so you said. Will you take me to a room? Hmm? Well, if you insist. I'm afraid I do insist, Mr. Simons. Well, I'm not at all sure I want to go in that room, Inspector. Why not? Well... Are you afraid to look at the flypaper, Mr. Simons? Flypaper? The flypaper that the room is full of, the flypaper that contains arsenic, the flypaper that can be bought at any shop without a poison certificate, Mr. Simons? Flypaper. That's it, flypaper. That's what it was. That's right. Why, I bought that flypaper myself. Poor Miss Hogg. She was so uncomfortable with all the heat, you know, and the flies. There there was something awful. Poor woman. She was suffering so. I've no doubt. And she said to me the very day before she died, it was. She said to me, go and fetch me some packets of that black flypaper. You soak in water and the flies drink it and they die. She begged me. Poison. I know it's poison. Arsenic. Arsenic. And she gave me the money. She gave me sixpence, I remember. And when I got to the chemist shop, they had only one threepenny packet of the stuff, and I bought that and brought it home. I hope you remember to give her the change, Mr. Simons. Eh? By Jove. It's too late now. You put the poison flypaper out, then? Yes, of course. Do you think I have no bowels of compassion at all? There were six sheets of the stuff, and I could find only four saucers or things for containers, though. Uh, you still have the other two sheets here in the house? Cause. Waste not. Want not. Quite right, Mr. Simons. Quite right. Now, how do you suppose the arsenic got from the flypaper into Miss Hogg's body? Why, 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 it was very hot. Yes. And uh, Miss Hogg drank a great deal of water. Yes. Go on, Mr. Simons. Well, could she have drunk off the poison water in the saucers? All of it. Well, if there's arsenic in her body... There is. Well, then... Well, then? Mr. Simons, I must detain you on suspicion of having caused the death of Winifred Hogg. Oh, no. You can't mean that. And I warn you that anything you say will be taken down in writing and may be used as evidence. But when Inspector Peters brought the remains of the threepenny packet of arsenical flypapers to Basil Pearson, Pearson shook his head. No good, Oliver. What's no good? The man practically confessed. No good, Oliver. Wasn't it arsenic after all? Of course it's arsenic, no question. That's what killed her. Basil, I don't understand you. You say... I say it wasn't the arsenic from these flypapers. Look here at the envelope that came in. Yes. The label. Read it. Uh, Down here, that fine print. I see. Did you read it? Arsenical content, three-tenths of a grain per sheet. That's right. Six sheets. Six times three-tenths. One and eight-tenths grain. 
A whole packet will kill flies, perhaps, but a human being. Do you know how much arsenic the standard Marsh test indicates was in her body? No. More than seven grains. Four times as much as a whole packet of these papers contains. You couldn't be wrong. Did you ever know me to be wrong? I don't think anyone ever knew Basil Pearson to be wrong. His death last year left a great void in the world of Scotland Yard, at least. He was as nearly indispensable as any man has ever been. It looked for a while as if Inspector Oliver Peters had dropped a most frightful brick that might do him irreparable harm in the CID. He had committed an unpardonable sin. He had jumped too quickly. Simons had gambled cleverly, knowing that the story of the flypapers would certainly be disproved in open court. He hoped clearing him completely. But he gambled too confidently. Before the preliminary hearing, I accompanied Oliver Peters to Simon's house in Tollington Park. I well remember what we found. There was nothing of any importance in the sick room where Miss Hoggard died, but in a dustbin in the cellar. I can still hear Oliver Peters' voice when he found them. John, John, look here. Look what I found. Well, I hurried to see. They looked like wrinkled sheets of blotting paper to me, but when Basil Pearson saw them... You're right, Oliver. 27, 28, 29. 30 sheets of the same kind of fly papers. See the name stamped on them. They're the same kind, all right. Each one of them contained uh, how much? Let's see the label from the other packet. Let's see it, Oliver. Arsenical content, three-tenths of a grain per sheet. And when all 30 of these sheets have been soaked clean, 30 times three-tenths, 90 tenths, nine full grains. Enough to kill an elephant, Basil. Well, enough to have killed a hog, at least, oh boy. This'll hang him. And so it did. The jury at Simon's trial at Old Bailey believed he'd made the concoction of 30 sheets of flypaper and fed it to Miss Hogg, and so they sentenced him to hang. Oh, and by the way, these are the same sheets of flypaper I showed you when we started to talk. I must put them back in the file. They've done their part. Good afternoon. Heard today on Whitehall 1212 in the order of their appearance were Harvey Hayes, Lester Fletcher, Winston Ross, Horace Braham, and Carl Harvard. Lionel Rico speaking. Whitehall 1212 is written and directed by Willis Cooper. <laughs> Forest rangers do a good job in protecting the woodlands of our nation. But even if we had many times the present number of forest rangers, they couldn't prevent all of the fires that threaten our forests. Anytime you're out in the fields and the woods, you should be your own forest ranger. Crush out cigarettes, cigar, and pipe ashes. Break matches in two after using them. Drown all campfires. Always follow these simple rules yourself and insist that others follow them too. Remember... It's up to all of us to protect our forests against fire. So don't be careless for a moment. Remember, the risk is far too great. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>